All right, folks, I'm back with part two of the Fantasy Football Focus Series on how to save the Miami Dolphins. So in the last video, we went over the great free agency sightings by the Dolphins so far in the 2020 season. Uh, in this video, we're going to review Miami's depth chart. Then also we're going to deep dive into my favorite category, and that is the upcoming 2020 NFL Draft. Woo! Let's go. All right, so depth chart. So like we talked about in the last video, Miami spent a lot of money on defense in this free agency, all right? Um, this offseason. The last few years, Miami has drafted defensive picks in the first round. And now again, like I said prior, these bad first round picks was before Brian Flores arrived. Okay. Now, sadly, last year, I watched a lot of Miami games because of fantasy football. I'm just kidding. And one thing that they didn't lack, but when you're watching it, the one thing they didn't lack was physicality and effort. Okay. Again, like I talked about in the last video, they beat New England at home at the last game of the year. Uh, and also dominated a tough Steelers team for the first half of a Monday Night Football game, all right? And they did this with one of the worst rosters in football talent-wise, all right? It wasn't for effort, but for talent-wise, it was one of the worst. Now, when you break down their defense, you start to realize that as a defense, they were weak on the edges, and also they were weak in the secondary due to injuries and trades, all right? But where the Dolphins were good at was stopping the inside run, okay? Uh, a big part of that was Christian Wilkins, their first-round 2019 pick. All right. Uh, Christian Wilkins is a big boy. He's flashed last year and showed he can be an elite player if he plays discipline. All right. He's an athletic big guy who's active with his hands and has a nose for the football. All right. Just watch his highlights and you'll see. Now, Wilkins can be that bright spot on the defense uh, if the Dolphin, that the Dolphins can build around for the future. Uh, also, they had great linebacking uh, linebackers in Ray Quan McMillan and Jerome Baker. All right. Uh, they both played very well the last two years for the Dolphins, and they should project as two of the four starters uh, with Van Noy and Roberts as that 3-4 hybrid scheme that Flores likes to run. Now, talking about Jerome Baker, Jerome Baker being one of those linebackers alone last year was a tackling machine. Uh, he had over 150 tackles in the 2019 season alone, all right? And then for the secondary, Eric Rowe, which is on the team, he was also another solid addition last year who I think can really show out here in 2020. Okay. Uh, he's a 20, he's a two time Super Bowl champ. All right. He played for Flores back in New England. He's a big and athletic corner. Uh, the dude can play the slot. He could play outside on an island. Uh, he can roll up to safety. I mean, you name it. Okay. Uh, he was a guy, he was the guy for the most part who shut down Julio Jones in the 2017 Super Bowl when the Falcons played the Patriots. All right. Not a lot of people know that, but besides Julio's one big catch, Eric Rowe shut him down. All right. Um, now when Eric Rowe is healthy in, in coast ride, he can be special, like I said. But now to summarize the Dolphins defense up, uh, they fixed a lot of their 2019 opportunities for the most part here in free agency. Uh, their secondary was depleted and terrible. And now going into the 2020 year, they have Byron Jones, Xavier Howard, and Eric Rowe in the secondary. All right. And maybe we'll pick someone up in the draft here. We'll see here soon. All right. Uh, but along with a really solid linebacking court with Van Noy leading the charge, uh, they also picked up Emmanuel Ogba and Shaq Lawson, which I talked about in the prior video, to help shore up the edges in the run game. OK, so those two new two DNs are going to help stop that run game. The outside run game. Now, Flores is a talented defensive coach, and with the new added free agency talent and what he had previously, I would be highly surprised if the Dolphins don't have a top 15 defense this year. All right. Uh, if no one gets hurt, I think they have a very good chance of being a top 15 defense. Okay. All right. Now, now onto offense. So this is going to be quick. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But to reflect, I will say that the Dolphins, you know, besides Ryan Fitzpatrick and Devontae Parker, they were pretty horrible last year on offense. Okay. In my 25 years of watching football, I don't think I've ever seen a team that was worse at running the football than the 2019 Miami Dolphins. All right. Now to back, back that up. Now to give you an example, here's a little stat for you. Okay. The number one rusher for the 2019 Miami Dolphins last year was not Kenyon Drake, their running back, which most of you know. It wasn't Mark Walton. It wasn't Kalen Bellage. And it wasn't Miles Gaskin. All right. So who was their top rusher last year? It was goddamn Ryan Fitzpatrick, okay? Yes, Ryan Fitzpatrick was the Dolphins' leading rusher for the season, all right? So when I tell you when a 37-year-old journeyman QB is leading is the leading rusher on your team, that is bad, okay? But look, I mean, now hate on, hate on Fitzpatrick all you want, right? And even me calling him a journeyman QB, he is, but the dude can play, all right? And when he's on, he lit a fire under that team, okay? And I get it. He's not the QB of the future, obviously, all right? But when he played, he had them motivated, and he helped people, he helped players like Devontae Parker become that elite wide receiver that he was drafted to be, right, in the 2019 year. Everyone, Devontae Parker dominated Stephon Gilmore, the best corner in the league last year, uh, at the very end, right? So that just will show what Devontae Parker can do when he has the right QB. 
So another very talented Dolphins receiver who got hurt, but he could come into his own last year. He started to come into his own last year was Preston Williams. Okay. Now I'm telling you, remember this name. Okay. Especially for you fantasy goers, remember this name. All right. Because this guy's going to be special. Preston Williams. This dude with Devontae Parker next year might be a top three wide receiver tandem in the league. Okay. Now, Looking at the overall depth chart, I realized that they got p- talent in the passing game with those game changer receivers and then having probably the most athletic tight end in the league from a measurable standpoint in Mike Gusecki. Uh, for you guys that don't know, Gusecki's a former Penn State tight end who's expected to have a breakout year this year in 2020. The guy can jump through the house, or jump through the roof. He's super fast, everything, right? Um, just watch his highlights, you'll see. But now, like I said earlier, when the Dolphins have, the Dolphins have to get better the one spot where they have to get better at is the offensive line, okay? And in the running back category, all right? That should be their focus in this year's draft. You know, overall offense, they have some pieces from weapons perspective, but they have a terrible offensive line, and they need to get better at the running back group. I like Jordan Howard, but at the same time, you better have an elite running back if you have a bad offensive line. Oh, and the last thing, so from the offense perspective, please, Miami, please cut Albert Wilson, Okay. Now, as a Chiefs fan, I've got a lot of love for Albert Wilson. Okay. A lot of good times, a lot of good catches I've seen over the past, and he's done good for the Chiefs. But Miami, he is the fourth or fifth receiver on your depth chart, right? And you're paying the guy $11 million a year. That's a WTF 100%. Okay. But again, that's the old Dolphins now. Okay. As Jim Belushi once said, no more. That's not happening here. All right. So we got to stop with those bad decisions. But so, in my opinion, just from a little overall depth perspective, uh, I just think that Dol- with the Dolphins' depth chart, with what they have in the free agency additions on offense and defense, I think Miami is now a top 15 to 20 team talent-wise, at a minimum. Okay, Now, unless something goes drastically wrong, I think their team's going to be drastically improved with the current new depth chart. All right, so on to the best part. The 2020 mock draft, Dan Tui, baby. All right, so for the Miami Dolphins, we'll see what we're going to select. All right, so... Let me just start with a little preamble. So when it comes to drafting, I do believe in building teams from front to back. Okay. Now, what that means is I believe to build a great team from a personnel perspective that you should start with addressing the offensive line or the defensive line first. Okay. So just look at the teams that have made it to the Super Bowl the last few years. All right. And this is what will kind of back up my opinion. So the 2019 49ers, they had the best D-line in the league, Super Bowl, right? Uh, the 2018 Patriots, which won it, they had a top 3 line, and then they also had a really good D-line, but their line was legit, okay, elite. Then take the 2018 Rams, who played against the Patriots. They had a top 5 line and a top 3 D-line, all right? Then you take the 2017 Eagles. They had the best line in the league and a top 3 D-line. Then you also have the 2015 Broncos, which had the best D-line in the league. Okay, so that is my kind of evidence to support my opinion saying that I like to, when you build a team, draft it from the front to back. So it means D-line, linebacker secondary, then it goes offensive line, QB, receivers, all right, front to back. Okay, so now since Brian Flores took over, he's cleaned house. I love Mika Fitzpatrick as a player, uh, but I still agree with Flores, the Flores' decision to get rid of him because Flores is trying to change the overall culture of the Miami Dolphins. Not to say Fitzpatrick was a bad guy, it's just you, you're getting out with the old and in with the new. Okay, um, you want to bring a new mentality, okay, and bring in the new new through the draft and free agency. So in this year alone, the Dolphins have a league high 14 draft picks because of some of these trades. Okay, the Dolphins have three first round picks and two second round picks and an early third. That's a that's six picks in the top 70. Okay, and I mean, wow on that because that's very that's extremely rare. I've been watching the draft in depth for a long time and having six picks in the top 70 is really rare. All right. And it might even be a record. Now, if Flores gets those six picks right, he's going to have a very talented football team for a very, very good price. You know, and like I said prior, the Dolphins have, you know, a lot of draft picks, right? Now, the third and fourth round picks, they have one third and one fourth. Now, in these draft rounds is where you get your team starters for real cheap, all right? You know, like Kareem Hunts or the Alvin Kamaros. These guys are found in these rounds here, all right? And then in talent deep drafts, you're going to get prospects who would regularly go in the second round in other drafts. Who are going to get drafted in the round three and round four. So you're going to have people like T. Higgins and people like that that are going to drop to later rounds, whether it's later second, beginning of third. And I'm telling you, mark my words, this 2020 draft class is special. All right. And this draft class is probably the deepest I've, I've seen in the last 10 years from a blue chip perspective, receive, wide receiver perspective. Um, you know, so again, there's a lot of talent to be drafted. The Dolphins couldn't be in a better position to draft. And then also the Dolphins have three fifth round picks where, you know, you get a lot of your talent there. 
uh, one sixth round pick and three seventh round picks. Now, the fifth, sixth, and seventh round picks are where the teams draft their backups, their role players, and the pivot roles in special teams. Okay. Um, again, there's not a bad draft pick. People get, when it gets to the fifth and sixth, seventh round, they go, Oh, I'm done. Again, that's where you get your backups. That's where you get, you know, the, the hidden gems that you can maybe get, turn into a starter. Okay. But now to help to save the Miami Dolphins and help to bring them out of the fray, as I would say, I'm going to play GM. All right. And I'm going to choose the first six picks in the 2020 draft for the Miami Dolphins. All right. So let's go. Okay, so I'm on the clock. All right, so with the fifth pick in the 2020 NFL Draft, the Miami Dolphins select Tristan Morphs from Iowa. Okay, now as the Dolphins GM, Dan Tui here, I selected Tristan Morphs because he is the best overall lineman in this draft. Okay, he played tackle in college, but I have selected Morphs because, yes, he could be a top 10 tackle most likely and a pro, pro bowler one day. But as a guard, Worfs is an all, all, all pro what day one, in my opinion. Okay? And that's a bold statement, but at the same time, he will be a pro bowler to all pro as a guard, hands down. All right? Uh, he's a suspect when it comes to kick stepping out as a tackle perspective. He needs, sometimes he reaches and he gets lost in the run game. But again, moving him to guard, he's going to be in that, in that box and he's going to be good. Uh, he will be the, the new Zach Martin, I think, in my opinion. Okay, the dude, I think he hang cleans 450 for a set of four. All right, that, he's a beast. Has the Iowa State record for hang clean. All right, a talent like Worf, you cannot pass up. All right, and a, a pick like Worf, it might not be the sexy pick, but for any person that understands football, this is the right pick to help build that O line. Okay, and a solid pick that'll be for there for you for the next five to 10 years. Now, some time's passed, right? Now I'm back on the clock at pick 18. All right. And there's been some bad choices by other GMs that have picked so far. All right. And also since Lady Luck is on my side, I got my 18th pick. So with my 18th pick, I decide to draft in the 2020 draft, Miami Dolphins select Justin Herbert, QB, Oregon. Okay. Now people have been sleeping on Herbert for a while now. He's six, seven, he's 240 pounds and he runs a four, six. All right. He has a cannon for an arm. He's smart and he's a still at pick 18. Now, I really don't think he's going to last to pick 18. I think the Dolphins are going to take him in real life at pick five. But at the same time, according to whatever the, you know, the, the draft status is saying, he's going to be there because of talent wise, right? He's a pick 18. Okay. But to my opinion, Herbert is a bigger, stronger, faster, and smarter Josh Allen. Now, the Miami Dolphins have their franchise QB, right? Okay. Maybe after taking Herbert. But now it's time to address the defense. So after a few picks later, they go by. I'm back on the clock, right? Because remember, we have three first round picks. And now with pick 26 overall in the 2020 NFL Draft, the Miami Dolphins select Xavier McKinney, safety. All right. Now, McKinney is by far the best safety in this class. McKinney is one of those do-it-all safeties. Okay, He could play slot. He could play outside. He matches up with tight ends if needed. And he could even rush the passer. I mean, I watch some of his highlights, and I see that the guy rushes the passer as good as some of DNs. I mean, it's crazy. And, you know, and the best overall aspect of McKinney, though, in my opinion, is his playmaking ability. You go and watch his highlights, every play is a, is, is a playmaking ability. It shows a, he's a playmaker, okay? Um, so, it's again, that's one of his strong suits. And then adding him to the Dolphins' already loaded secondary makes the, the Dolphins' passing game, the, the defensive passing game, elite, all right? And top three in the league when it comes to talent alone, all right? Okay, so now on to the money rounds, so, which is what I like to call round two. So this is where you get your Derrick Henrys, your Chris Jones, players with first-round talent, but a way cheaper price. All right. Now, again, because of stereotypes, the league thinks that getting a stud running back in the first round or early second round is a bad choice. And I, it's BS to me. Okay, If you got a good running back, you draft him in the first round. And because of this... Now the Miami Dolphins select the best running back in the draft, not named DeAndre Swift, okay? So with that overall pick, I'm going to take Jonathan Taylor in the beginning of the second round, all right? Now, to me, Jonathan Taylor is like a mini Saquon Barkley, okay? I'm not saying he's good as Saquon, but he's like him. The dude is a tank. He's lightning quick, all right? Uh, for you guys that watched the combine, he ran a 4-3-9, all right? And he's built, all right? He's not small. He's quick. He's explosive. He's violent. He's a violent runner like Derrick Henry. Okay. Not big as Derrick Henry, but he's a violent runner like him. Okay. You put a guy like Jonathan Taylor behind a good O line like Dallas and Philly, that kind of guy's going to rush for 2,000 yards. All right. And that's the kind of guy you want. Okay. So now let's recap so far. So, so far, I got the best O lineman in the draft, the best safety, and the best RB in the draft. All right. And I also got my franchise QB. He might not be everyone's favorite QB, but I still got a franchise QB. All right. So not bad so far with my first four picks, right? 
So, like I talked about prior, the Dolphins were the worst running team I've ever seen in 2019. Okay, you, they literally could not get a positive yard forward. Um, and since Flores and I are believers in the Bill Belichick system, we're going to keep rebuilding that offensive line. All right. And now with the 56 pick overall, I choose Isaiah Wilson. Okay. Now Isaiah Wilson is a six seven, 350 pound behemoth offensive tackle from Georgia. Okay. As you can see on the picture above, he's a big guy. All right. Um, Wilson is the definition of a road grader. Road grader, and with him, worse him and worse playing next to each other on the right side. I now have two of the best young run blocking alignment in the league. Okay. And my offensive line rebuild is complete with elite players. It's not just a mediocre offensive line. It's really good, all right? Especially in the run game, all right, which I like to do. I want to run the ball. Now, after a few more picks go by, I'm back on the board at pick 70, all right? Now, with pick 70, I'm going to keep building the trenches because, like I said, I like to build front to back, and I'm going to select Raekwon Davis, okay? Now, Davis is from Alabama, one of those elites. He's 6'7", 315-pound D-tackle, who can also play the 5-tech in those 3-4 heavy packages, okay? And now, when you think about it, when you have Christian Wilkins and Raekwon Davis on the field together, no one is going to run the ball on us, all right? So, we're stopping the run right there. And then, our linebackers are going to be able to make plays, right? Because they're going to take up the offensive linemen, and they're going to, you know, they're going to cover the trenches. So... After that, next I'm going to look for some playma playmakers, okay, uh, and some depth. So after the pick, after that pick, we're at pick 141 in the fourth round, all right. So now I'm looking for playmakers, like I said. Now I want to select one guy who's really underrated, and I think the best overall weapon in this draft from a gadget player standpoint. It's Antonio Gibson, okay. So in the fourth round with pick 141, I'm going to select Antonio Gibson. Now Antonio Gibson is my favorite hy hy hybrid player in this draft, hands down. Okay, he's 6'2", with a running back body and movement, but he plays like a receiver. Okay, he played full-time receiver at Memphis, right? and the coaching staff at Memphis finally woke up and realized that this dude is amazing and runs a 4'3'9", and he should be starting, he should be playing running back as well. Okay, so he played receiver, but then when the coaches realized he's better than all of our running backs, they started playing him at running back. All right, so that's the kind of guy Antonio Gibson is. Just look him up, you'll see his plays, his highlights are ridiculous. All right, whoever gets him, whenever you, whoever's listening, if your team gets him, you're lucky. All right, so then with my next pick at pick 153, I select the most underrated pass rusher in this draft. It's Derek Tuska out of North Dakota State, all right? Now, Tuska will help add some, you know, had, help add depth at the end spot and will most likely take the job from Ogbar Lawson down the line, okay? And I like Ogbar Lawson, but I can see Tuska taking that spot. Now, I then finish the fifth round off by selecting Logan Wilson, a ball hawk linebacker out of Wyoming. He kind of reminds me of my brother when he played at linebacker uh, sophomore year, okay? He plays just like him. Uh, and I also selected Shane Lemieux, another phone booth type of guard out of Oregon, who added depth on the O-line, okay? And for Herbert to have another player that he's protecting his blind side that he played with in college, okay? Shane Lemieux is going to be a good offensive lineman as well, right? And I got him at a bargain in the fifth round. Okay, so I don't want to go over it anymore. I know it's already taking a lot of time. So uh, let's now let's recap, all right? So my real focus in this draft was to fix the offense, okay? So what Flores did in the offseason with accumulating the defensive talent, he allowed me to do, you know, to focus on the offense where, you know, they really needed help. Now, here's an up-to-date depth chart with the new 2020 draft talent included, okay? So the first thing to look at is the secondary from a talent perspective. Now I have Xavier, Xavier Howard, Byron Jones, Eric Rowe, and Xavier McKinney. All right. That is one hell of a secondary group. OK, I also have Bobby McCain at nickel. I, you know, that's a very, very good secondary. OK, now the reason I grabbed McKinney was to complete that secondary and now have him with them. OK, now this makes a secondary group an elite overall secondary and at least a top three talent wise. All right. I also grabbed uh, Raekwon Davis and Derek Kuska to start, you know, to sure up that defensive line. And now the focus of the draft was obviously on offense, like I said. I took Worfs at five because I, I think he's the most versatile and talented offensive lineman in this draft. I then selected I Wilson to complete the offensive line rebuild in round two. All right. And now the starting five offensive linemen are Julian Davenport at left tackle, Eric Flowers at left guard, Ted Carreras at center, Tristan Worfs at right guard, and Isaiah Wilson at right tackle. So in this one offseason, I went from having the worst offensive line in the league to having a top three offensive line off talent alone. Okay. I also drafted Oregon center Shane Lemieux as the sixth man on the O-line. Then to add on to that full rebuild, I selected Jonathan Taylor, who's an amazing talent, obviously, in the second round, which is just an absolute steal. Um, to me, you know, getting a, he's like getting a healthy Todd Gurley in the second round. Right? And I also got my franchise QB, Justin Herbert, in the middle of the second or in the first round as well. Okay. 
And then don't forget, you know, about that, that, that all the talent that we added in the free agency and through the draft. Um, the Dolphins still have, remember, you gotta remember this too. The Dolphins still have two first round picks and two second round picks next year as well. Okay. And I'm telling you, I've never seen, i never seen a team with this much draft capital in a two year span. So I'm super excited to see how the 2020 season goes, the 2021 season, uh, and how it plays out for the Miami Dolphins. Okay. Now, Fours, if Fours makes the right picks here, the Dolphins in this draft, and next we're going to be one of the most talented teams in the league. All right. So to sum it up, now overall, I do believe Brian Flores. I do believe he is the right man for the job to you know to turn this franchise around. The Dolphins have had 60 coordinators in the last six years, guys. Okay, and they've had four new head coaches in that same time frame. Now, if Miami ownership lets Flores do his job and gives him the right time to get it right, I do think that the Dolphins will take the division, if not in 2021, by 2022 at latest. All right. Now, I completed this video on Miami because I like Brian Flores and I'm a diehard Chiefs fan. Okay, uh, but I, I've always had, a, I've always have, I've always been a fan of the Patriot way. Okay, I'll be honest with you. So I've always liked Tom Brady, but I've always liked Bill and respected what they do. Uh, so I know Flores is a good coach, right? You come off that coaching tree, you might not be an elite head coach, but you're still a good coach. You know, and I'm a sucker for those rags to riches stories, okay? So I'm rooting for Flores overall and the Dolphins to turn it around. And I hope they show people that they can be a winning franchise again. Um, so to sum up, I will be doing one of these Save the Franchise series about every once, at, once every month or two. Uh, so if there's a franchise you want me to deep dive into and try and save next, then please put the comments in the below section and let me know whose team you want me to save next time. <laughs> All right. Um, this is the one and only Diamond Dan coming to you from Fantasy Football Channel. Uh, and I'm signing off, guys. Peace.